So up next, we have tooling for building ZK EVM Peel and Circom with Jordi Bailina from Polygon. Well, hello everybody. I'm Jordi Bailina. I'm the technical lead at Polygon Hermes. Um, in Polygon Hermes, what we are want to build is uh, mainly is a ZKVM. Um, for the people that don't know, what means ZKVM is mainly what we are trying is to scale Ethereum. That means that we are trying to process as many transactions as we want. Mm, I'm not going to explain you how a layer two works. Have many pieces. You know, we need to collect transactions sequencers, send it, um, send it somewhere, create the blocks. But uh, I'm going to focus very much in, in, the, in, the, in one of the most, well, in the, in the most critical part or the most dis different part of the ZK, ZK roll-ups, which is the prover. Okay? So the prover, what we are trying to prove. So what's, what's the idea? What we want to prove here is we want to prove that uh, we have a state we're in a state, like would be like like Ethereum state, so a state of uh, balances and information. We have some transactions. In all case, these transactions are Ethereum transactions, so transactions that may be generated, for example, from MetaMask or from any client of Ethereum. So we want to keep, uh, to, we want to be as compatible as Ethereum as possible, and then we generate a new state according to the Ethereum rules. Okay, so this is the challenge that we started uh, about a year ago, even a little more. And uh, yeah, how we build that, okay? So probably the, maybe the first, the first approach is, okay, let's try to build a normal um, traditional circuit, uh, snark circuit with uh, snarks and so on. If you try to, if you think a little bit about that and you try to build something like that, you see that that's not um, feasible, at least practically, practically feasible. This would be, I like to compare building this kind of circuits or building this kind of uh, zero knowledge uh, statements uh, in circuits, I like to compare it with, uh, with uh, hardware like, you know. Uh, in hardware, R1CS would be like having just normal gates and well, you put some values at the beginning, you have a circuit that just ends and ors, or in this case are arithmetic gates, but you, you compute something and at the end you have a result, okay? Um, so this is not efficient, so we need to find something that's more efficient. And here is where, when we come up to just to work with polynomials. So instead of working with single signals, we work with polynomials. Why we work with polynomials? Because with pol polynomials at the end, is, uh, well, it allows you to do many constraints at the same time. This is very much the, 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 the equivalent would be in, in electronics, like having the clock. Now in the clock, you can have a small circuit and then in each clock, you generate a new, uh, uh, a new value. Well, but this new value is a new value in the polynomials. When I'm talking about polynomials, I know that many of you already know, but talking about polynomials means talking about an array of values. Array of values would be like the coefficients, actually are not the coefficients, are the evaluations uh, of the polynomial at a certain point, but in any case, it's a polynomial. It's just a way of understanding a polynomial, okay? so. With this um, system, we can uh, do, do many constraints in parallel, and we have these kind of state transitions, okay? So we, can, we have some values, we have a clock, so we have a next, next row, we have a new values that depends on the last one, and this is what allows us to, well, if we have a state transitions, then we can have uh, processors. So the main strategy here is we have these polynomials, we build the processor, on top of this processor we build the program that actually what it does is emulates uh, Ethereum. So it takes transactions uh, as an input, it, it emulates what, what uh, Ethereum does, and then it computes a new, a new state. So this is the main, the main um, work. So um, the, the first layer is how we build this um, polynomials, so this hardware layer, if you want, or this, it's not hardware, it's arithmetic, but at the end it's like how we build these um, processors, how we build these um, systems where we work with polynomials. So for that, um, I'm gonna explain, like, uh, we, we, well, we built a language just for writing, for, for creating these uh, uh, 
polynomial identities for writing this hardware. We call it PIL. Uh, PIL stands for polynomial identity language. And as in many, as in any other language, I'm going to explain a hello world, which is a very simple example, but uh, it will allow you to understand how we are building the, the full system. So we start with a classical example. This comes from the Starks literature, and it's very classical. It's a Fibonacci series. Why Fibonacci series makes sense? And it's because you have a state transition. So you have a state transitions we can have. We'll see later on how we build processors. So that's, that's why you start uh, with this. Just as a documentation, if we build that, for example, in Circom, which is just about circuits, we could write a normal Circom language. We are connecting circuits. At the end, we would have, in this case, if it's 1,024 uh, steps, we will have 1,024 constraints. Actually, this is not really true. Circom will optimize to a single constraint because it's just uh, are additions. But if instead of working, for example, with a Fibonacci addition Fibonacci, we, 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 we were talking about a multiplication Fibonacci, we would have all these 1,024 constraints. So it would be a quite complex uh, circuit in that. So how we build that in, in, in PIL? Well, we need to decompose uh, the, the, the system in, uh, a state, in a state machine, in a state transition. So in this case, we define uh, two, state, uh, two state variables. We call it before last and last, like the, having like two, 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 the two values. And then we define a state transition function, so something that we compute the next value according to the previous value. Okay? So in this case would be, well, uh, the, the, the before last would be just the last, Okay, so here it's just, you know, this, this just go the last, and the last is just the addition of the last of the last two. This is what we are setting here. Okay, so this, um, when we put it in as a polynomial in a polynomial level, before last, this is a state transition variable. It will be a polynomial. Each uh, evaluation, it will be a different state. So this will be like a, a from one clock to another clock. Okay, and. These is are just the evaluation. The evaluation where, where here is one, at W, at W squared, W3, and so on. This W are the roots of unity. You know, this is a, a subgroup here that we, works very well on that, okay? So, um, how we write that in, how we write that in PIL? Well, this is would be the single, uh, the single way uh, of writing PIL, okay? So here we, we will start with this line of code. This is, we define the two state machines. In this case, these are two polynomials. We define two polynomials. In the case, this case is before last and last. And here are the relationship. Actually, you can you just take this part here. We say that uh, this minus this must be equal to zero. So that means that this must be equal to this. And this minus this, this is equal to zero. Okay? What happened here is that, uh, okay, uh, this state transition function uh, must feel you know, everywhere. And everywhere means that the last, uh, so this is a cyc cyclic uh, idea, so the last line also, the this state transition function must, must fit with the first. And in this case, would not uh, fit that. So we need to deal with this, um, with this situation on the last. So in order to do that, we just create, a, a, in this case, it's another polynomial. It's not a committed polynomial. In this case, it's a preprocessed pre polynomial. It's a polynomial that's constant polynomial, a polynomial that we know beforehand. That's a polynomial that's zero everywhere, except for the last row, that's uh, one, okay? So the condition, we apply this condition only when its last is one, so only into the last line. Uh, sorry, uh, to all the lines except for the, for the last one. When the last line is one, then this is zero, so this is gonna be fulfilled no matter uh, what are the values, but uh, in the other cases, then the, the, the condition, the state transition must uh, fulfill. He, here also, uh, we are adding a public variable. Uh, you know, the, in, the, in the case of the Fibonacci series, what we want to prove is that we now two values, and when we apply the Fibonacci series uh, 1,024 uh, times, it gives this specific value. Okay, so this specific value would be the, 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 public, the public value. So we define here the public value, where it, that's the, well, the E last at the, at, the last, at the last position, and it's just a constant just to, just to change. You don't have to go to all the code and, and change a single, a single number. And then we need to apply this extra condition, which is that in, in the last line, so when this line is one, if it's zero, this will be fulfilled always, but when this last is one, then uh, a last must be the, the, the current public input, 
Okay? So with this, we define all the polynomial identities. With this, we define all the conditions that, uh, for the system. Okay? What else we need in order to build that? Well, we need a piece of code. Actually, we need two things more. Okay? One thing that we need is, well, build these uh, pre -pre processed polynomials, so these constant polynomials. In this case, it would be a code, something like that. So we just, well, we just set up a polynomial that's zero everywhere except for the last row that's one. So this is what the, the building the, the constant polynomials, or so the preprocessed polynomials. And then we need like what would be the equivalent of the witness computation. So when we want to execute this circuit, we want to uh, commit to some specific polynomials. In this case, we want to start, for example, to, uh, well, two inputs, input zero and input two, so it's just a array of two values. We said this, you put these values in the first, in the first, in the first row, okay? And for the next rows, we just compute the next rows just applying the normal Fibonacci. This, this FGL at is just because we are working in a finite, in a, in a specific finite field, okay? So that's it. That's all what we need in order to build a circuit, a polynomial, so a polynomial circuit. So what we can do with that? Okay, so if we go here, well, we can, we, we can test that. So for, for, for here is, uh, well, we have Pilcom, which is, it helps you to, to work with this. In this case, we, well, Pilcom has compiled, and we are just taking the pile file, and we are just translating to a, an object that, uh, the system understands is we are just compiling it. Okay, this um, new constant uh, pulse array, it just, this is just builds a placeholder of the polynomials with a naming so that we just have to fill. We call, here in this case, we call the build constants, what we, we were building, well, what we generated in the previous slide. Okay, so here we have all the, all the, constant, on the, the constant fillet, okay? Then we generate the, the placeholder for the, the placeholder for the committed polynomials. In this case, we are filling these committed polynomials with, uh, in this case, with a specific value, one and two, the first two values. Well, we print the result. And the other thing that we can do at this point is, uh, well, verify the, just verify that uh, this, the constants plus the committed polynomials, so constant polynomials, the committed polynomials, and the pill, all these uh, matches. Okay, so this is like the, the first step. And that's it, okay? The second part is, okay, once we have this, we can create a proof, you know, as, as you know, so a, a proving system. So for proving system, mainly it's a prover and a verifier that we can prove that we can, we now, uh, we know some polynomials that fulfill this uh, pill without having to reveal the full, all the polynomials itself. You know, that's mainly the zero knowledge proof. Okay, so for this, what we are doing is we are using Pillstark, and Pillstark does this automatically. You don't have to do anything else. So here in the in the in the right side, this is how you generate the the proof and verify that. Okay, for it's a Stark, so we need to define here the structure of the Stark. So we need to define, for example, what's the blow-up factor. In this case, we are starting with uh, the n bits is 10, but the blow-up factor is 4 bits. So we go the extended the extended the extended is uh, 14 bits. Okay, number of queries, this depends on the double up factor and some other variables, so in this case it is uh, 32. We say here which hash function we are going to use uh, for building the Stark. In this case, because this Stark is going to be verified with another Stark, we are using the Goldilocks um, uh, hash function. And here we define the different steps of the, on the fry, so how we are reducing the polynomials and different, uh, here we can have different strategies depending on the, on the properties we want, okay? So once we have this structure, we just do a kind of a setup. This setup, mainly what it does, it takes the constant polynomials, it takes the pill, and it takes the star struck, and mainly what it does, it mercalizes, so it extends, so it, 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 it do the, the interpolation of the constants and, and mercalizes these constant polynomials, that's mainly what does this step. Then we have the star gen, so the, the generation of the proof itself, from the generation of the proof, we need the committed polynomials that we, we computed in the previous uh, parts. Of course, we need the constant polynomials um, uh, that we also compute in the previous parts, and then we, we just need part of the setup that we built in the, previous, in the previous step. And with this, we generate the proof, okay? And then we, we can 
verify also this, this proof. What do we need to verify? Well, we need the proof. We need also the publics. In this case, it's going to be a single array of the last value, so the, the publics variables that we, what we want to proof against, and part of the, and here is part of the setup, which is mainly the root of the constant trees and some information that this includes the structure of the Stark and uh, part of the pill itself, okay? So we didn't have to do much thing. So we just define pile, we define we just define a way of building these polynomials, and we define a, a, a way of building the committed polynomials, and, and then the system will generate automatically. Okay, so but with this we can do a lot. You know, we can do state transitions, but PIL is a little bit more uh, flexible and can al can do also other interesting things. I'm going to run a little bit about uh, these other things. One thing that can do, for example, is uh, define a permutation check. Now, permutation check mainly what means is that we have two polynomials, okay, so with different values, and then we want to check that these two polynomials are the same values, maybe in different, it's a permutation with a different, with a different sort. So how we would write that in PIL? Well, we just define the two polynomials, A and B, and we say that A is, a, is a permutation of B, so A is, is, is B, okay? So we have this, it's as simple as that. And this automatically, PIL start would generate all the all the stark and all the required you know it's it's here. you don't have to worry about that uh, people will generate all the all the steps for doing that okay let's let's go a little bit more something that's more complex so imagine that we want to do a permutation check but not in all the rows but just to some specific rows okay and uh, in in two columns okay so that's three 333 is 333, 222 is here, so we can do a permutation check. So in this case, we, we can define two, two selectors polynomials that says which are the rows that are valid in the left and in, in, the, in the right, in this cell A and cell B, and we can have like as many columns as we want, okay? And how we would express that in, in, in PIL? Well, we would express that like this. So the selector at the beginning and then with, uh, with um, with brackets, we put the, the well the polynomials that we want to be uh, permutation a permutation check. I think it's very clear in a single line how we can do these uh, permutations. Okay, we can do also p lookups. Okay, so uh, in this case, okay, so this is not a permutation. We want to check that these values are included in so this set of values is included in this other in this other set. How we would do that in pill? Well, we have a in a in B, okay? So that's the, a single, as simple as that. With this single condition, we will generate all the P lookups. Uh, so the, the, the proof, you know, we don't have to worry, you know, it just, that's it, it, it proves, okay? If you want to do a range check, for example, well, we just create a, a constant polynomials with the range, with all the numbers of the range, and then we just check that these values are, in, in, are included in this range, so as, as, easy, as, as easy as that. Of course, with with uh, pillow, with pillow cap, we can also do this trick of selectors. So we can select that apply the pillow cap to only some specific uh, values, and we can define also uh, some values in the left and in the in the in the right. And it also works multi-column. So it, internally, it will do all the linear combinations of a random value, and you know, we do all the all the proving system. But this is transparent to the to the user or to the to the developer that's building the the, 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 the you know the hardware the, the hardware construction the the prover the prover construction okay so and the other thing that can do in 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 peel is uh, is the uh, copy constraints so in this case for example we have a polynomial and we want to check that the value here is exactly the same that here, here, and here, okay? Or the value in the second row is the same that the value in the, in the seventh row, okay? So how we do that? Okay, in this case, we define uh, another polynomial. In general, this is gonna be a constant polynomial, but could not necessarily have to, okay? And here is what we call it the, 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 permuta the, the, mm, the permutation, uh, the permutation of the, the mm, um, well, the, the, um, um, uh, um, well, the polynomial that defines, so this is how we build this polynomial. In this case, if we want to do a copy constraint of here or here, mainly what we do is we exchange, so instead of putting here a W and a W6, we just swap it. We just put the W6 and the W, okay? And if we have the, 
And if we have one, uh, in the case of we want to do a copy constraint of four, we just do a rotation on this uh, permutation, on, on, on this permutation polynomial, okay? And uh, we express that in PIL just A connects with the S uh, rule or with the S uh, polynomial, okay? This, for the people that know Splunk, this is mainly uh, the, the copy constraint part of, of, of Plunk. Actually, Plunk, for example, does with multiple rows. We can also do with as many rows as we can. In this case, we can have a copy constraint. In this case, identity polynomials are, well, the EX, K1X, K2X, or K3X, and so on. And then we are just doing this um, rotation so that we define the copy constraints. So we can also connect columns and work uh, uh, with this way. But at the end, we are just building polynomials. So it's committed polynomials, constant polynomials, and so on. So yes, this is mainly with this we have Plonk. Actually, this, this is how Plonk uh, would look like. Okay, so in the case of Plonk, uh, it's a specific case of this. So we have uh, three committed polynomials, A, B, C. We have uh, um, three, uh, uh, three um, uh, permutation polynomials, SA, SB, and, and SC, so that uh, define the connection polynomials. We have the, the Plong gate you know, with Q left, Q right, Q multiplication, Q output, and Q constant. In this case, we define also a, a, a public input. In this case, the public input is at the A0 in this case. And here are the, here are the well, here we see the copy constraint, which is as easy as that. And here we have the, 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 the Plonk gate uh, together. Here, just as a detail, um, I'm not, I don't want to extend here, but uh, in PIL we only allow um, going to two, two n degrees, okay? Because this, uh, uh, this allows to have a lot of control of uh, um, how we grow the degree of the polynomials, okay? Because this is handled automatically and, uh, for the start, this uh, degree, this extension of the degree. And in the last line is for the public, in the public input. But you see here that this is quite uh, flexible uh, because this allows us to, to combine um, what would be equivalent to custom gates with plong, with circuits, but at the same time, uh, we can have uh, 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 state machines and, and, and so on. So one of the things, for example, that allows, is, that allows us to do is, and this is already done, is, uh, for example, uh, we can build, a, we can use circum to build a circuit, okay? In circum, we extend that a little bit circum, just for example, to support what we call it custom gates, okay? Custom gate is the same that as a template in circum, so like a normal component. It's a, it, this gate, we don't define explicitly the constraints, but we define the witness computation, so how this uh, gate so how this template will, uh, will, will how, the, how the witness will be computed, okay? And then these custom gates are then exported in the R1CS file. So we can take this as R1CS file and then build the S, the, the connections uh, and, the, and the gates specific for, for that plong. So this allows to connect. In this case, for example, this is a, well, this is a template for, uh, for, a extension three, uh, for an extension three multiplication. Uh, in this case, okay? So, uh, well, this is what we did in Circum, people interested, well, there is some documentation on that, okay? So, um, um, and then uh, we have, Pil then we have uh, Pillar Stark. Pillar Stark, as I, I, sh I showed before, we allows us to build Starks, but it allows us to do uh, more things. So one of the interesting thing of Pillar Stark is that not only generates the prover and the verifier, it, al it also generates a verifier circuit bracket in circum that verifies a specific pill. Okay? Um, so, uh, this, um, so this is very flexible because uh, we have both things. So we, 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 this circuit uh, then can be uh, used to create another proof. So in this case, it would be a proof of proof. So we have recursion on this, uh, on, on, on this part, okay? So let me show here uh, uh, an example. Uh, this here is, uh, mm, yeah, this is pretty stark, okay? So just so that you, more or less that uh, looks, how it looks like. So here, for example, we just, uh, in this case of the Fibonacci, in the case of a Fibonacci series, we, well, we can do the different, the different parts. So we can build the constants. 
we can build just the constants. Um, uh, well, we build the uh, we build the constants. We we can execute the we can execute the Fibonacci and generate the committed polynomial. We just do we can do the here is we can do the. So we, we can verify the pill, so we can check that the, what we generated is okay. So in this case, goes and then says, okay, everything matches. If not, it tells you exactly where where you have a mistake or something that you don't match. And then here is where starts the thing. You know, you, you generate the constant tree. So this is the the generation of the of the of the of the of the, of, the, of the setup of the of the circuit. Then we have the generation of the proof. So we generate the proof. We can verify the proof. In this case, I just put eight queries, which is not safe, but just uh, just a matter of putting more. And then it's uh, and here is generate the circum. Okay, so in generate circum is okay. We are taking this verifier and we are generating a circum. So if we check here, uh, we uh, we have uh, well, this is a uh, let me see here Fibonacci dot uh, uh, dot verifier dot circum. Okay, so this is the, the 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 circuit that was generated automatically, but this is pure circum. So you can compile uh, circum uh, uh, in this case. Okay, so this takes pill. Of course, you need to do some operations in the circuit, so it's a specific to the circuit, but you have already the circuit. Okay, but once you have the circuit, once you have the circuit, then you can um, then you just um, you can. Uh, do a setup. So actually, you are with the setup. You are computing. You are computing the the the. So you are converting this circum to a uh, to another Stark. In this case, it, this will generate. In this case, this will generate. Uh, this is the compressor. Well, we can't see those because compressor dot twelve because there is twelve uh, uh, polynomials here. But this generates a specific pill. It's a pill that looks very much. As a, as a plonk that we generated, but with some specific gates. In this case, is for the MDS matrix of the, uh, the MDS and the, and the, this multiplication in the extension field that are explicit. But this is generated automatically. So this will generate automatically um, uh, another Stark that verifies the previous Stark. So and with this, we can recursively, for example, generate many Starks. In this case, for example, compress the proof or or, or doing that. that. Okay, and in the last step, we can also. So in, uh, the, the last thing is that circum can be. So you can use circum in uh, in Stark mode, or if you want using the Goldilocks prime for a Stark. But then you can use also the BN uh, 128 or the BLS to to build the for, to build a Snark at the end. So the, the, here the idea is that you can build like a lot of Starks. Uh, or, or you know a chain of Starks of different layers, maybe one, two, or, or zero, and then at the end you can verify this Stark maybe with a gross 16 or Plonk uh, with a non regular circuit uh, altogether. Okay, so this allows. So this is very flexible because it allows us to do recursive Starks. For example, it allows us to do, for example, to aggregate different proofs and, and put it in a in a single circuit, and uh, it also allows us to use Circum to build. Some specific parts. In the case of the ZKBM, for example, we are building the. For example, you see how we are building the Ketchak. The Ketchak at the end is. It, this works very well, for example, as a circuit. So we we, we have a circum circuit that just do the the Ketchak, and then uh, the only thing is that uh, you know this the Ketchak in general is a circuit that works in binary in, in binary bits. So you have a circuit that's binary circuit, and then you have the gates here are mainly XORs and. Uh, Kind of an AND, an AND with some negated input or something like that. Okay, so you can have. Uh, so what we are doing is instead of. Uh, so we have these two gates. We have the. Uh, we have the, the the circuit that's binary circuit, but actually the gate of of doing an XOR. Uh, we we can do XORs in parallel. So the days with a single circuit actually is where like we have. I don't know, 10, 11, or uh, actually it's nine, but it's nine, but you can have as many. So we can use each specific bit as one bit of a circuit. So we have the less significant bit is the, the bit of that variable in one circuit, the second more significant bit in, if, of the other circuit. So we can have like nine or, or uh, n circuits in parallel. And then for the gates, we can just use p lookup to do the ANS and the XOR, so we can do it in parallel. And this is a way of, for example, for optimizing a lot the KCAC. And this, you know, this is an example of using 
Circum, putting, taking the gates of the Circum, doing some custom gates, put it in the, in the, in the pill, and then, of course, uh, this, uh, this is called then from the, from the processor in the ZK EVM. Okay, you can see a little bit the, the, the tooling, how we are building all that. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so we cover a little, we cover a little bit this. We have recursive, you know, the recursive Stark. So all that we can do on that. Of course, we can verify a Stark with Plong with Euro 16. Cover a little bit this. Going fast because it's long and want to go a little bit deeper. So and I want to focus now a little bit in the in the prover. So this is a little bit the tooling, but now let's see how the prover uh, more or less so more or less work. Or at least give an idea of, of, of what's the idea. Well the idea is well we built a processor. It's a specific processor that works well. The idea is a specific ZK processor, but we are tailor mating this for some specifics of on the on the EVM. So the processor looks very much like that. We have some registers, we have some output, so the, the registers, of course, the, the, we have the next registers, the status of the next registers, and then here we have a kind of an, op an operation, in this case is, for example, for doing moves between registers. So the operation would be uh, in A, in B, in C, it's an operation, uh, instruction, it's a set of polynomials. We could pack, we, could, we, could, we, you, we can encode, we, we, we can encode that all together to a single value, but we, we already have it in multiple, multiple polynomials. So in each step, we have a structure that we want to execute, and the instruction may include, for example, moving A to B. That would be the in A polynomial at this, at this step would be one, the others in Bs would be zero, and then the seat E would be one, and the others would be zero. And in PIL, how, we look, how would this look? Well, we generate this intermediate polynomial in this case, which is A times in A plus B times in E. In this case, in A is one and the others are zero, so OP is gonna be A, and then we are assigning to E, because here is, for example, is, is, is set E is uh, one, then is OP minus E plus E, so it's OP, and so it will be assigned. And if, if, if it's zero, then we just maintain the last value, okay? And as the most, well, we, here we have a constant, so instruction can constant a constant for immediate values, and we also have a here a special polynomial that is free in. So sometimes there are instructions that allows you to put any value. Probably because later on you want to, um, to check that this value. For example, you want to do a division, this allows you to put a value here, and then it's gonna be an instruction that will force that maybe A divided by B is C. Okay, so that's the, that's the idea. So we, have, we need instruction that, put, that allows you to put uh, um, this value. Of course, as any, as any processor, we have a program counter. A program counter just says which, which line are you executing. We have a ROM. A ROM, uh, the program itself is a constant value, so it's a, it's a, it's a constant polynomial. So at the end, well, it's a set of constant polynomials that are actually the, the, the program. We have an assembly language, we'll see later on, that compiles an, uh, an assembly to these uh, polynomials, you know, to the values of uh, these polynomials and then we execute that, okay? Of course, uh, we have conditional jumps. Conditional jumps at the end is just how we, you know, we, how we compute the next program counter. In general, it's gonna be the next, the next line uh, of code that we're executing, but if it's a conditional jump or just a jump, maybe we go to somewhere else in the, in the program, okay? Um, here, let me just jump here. How we are forcing here, how we are forcing that we are executing a specific ROM, because you know, in these polynomials, in the, we can put any value there, we can execute an instruction, but we, were, we want to force this to put in the ROM. Well, mainly what we have here is, we have the execution trace, the execution trace is, um, well, we, in, we have the program counter, so which, which line we sup were supposed to, to, to be executed, act, and actually what we are executing, and in the other side, we have a set of polynomials that are constant, that are fixed, that are, uh, uh, that's the program, the ROM that we want to, to, to execute, okay? In this case, it's just a program with, we have the line of the program, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, all together. So, and here we, we are using just a single block up, a uh, pillow cup, just to, to, to check that the program, that the, the, so the program counter matches with the program line that we supposed to execute, and also, of course, the, the, the instruction that we are actually executing matches with the ROM that we are, that we are executing uh, on this, okay? So with this, we have a processor, we have a ROM that we want to execute. What else uh, do we have? Of course, this is not enough. We have a RAM. Um, gonna, well, it's, we have also a RAM, so we can, we, we, we can put values in, uh, to the RAM to, uh, and so on. 
we have a storage, you know, because uh, we need to storage balances and nonces and, uh, you know, the, the, the smart contracts, they have a storage. It's really just right, so we need to uh, have some uh, specific state machine. Actually, this storage is a processor itself. Here we are using a sparse Merkle tree, so this is a, like another processor similar to that with some specific instructions just to handle all the state machine, so all the, all the, all, to handle all the, the sparse Merkle tree uh, logic altogether. We have also a binary, binary state machine. This is mainly it's handling for ands or XORs, even additions and subtractions, less than. This is mainly we are doing is byte to byte and with plookup. So the idea is just to use that. We have an arithmetic here. It's very interesting. It's very interesting state machine because this arithmetic allows us to do um, uh, cross prime uh, operations in a very, very not, but quite cheap. Okay. Here, for example, we have encode in this uh, arithmetic, we encode here all the uh, CDSA specific uh, um, um, operations, basic operations, so that the, the for, for example, for verifying a CDSA inside the CKVM, it's a kind of a mix of these arithmetic operations and then a program that's doing the exponentiation and all the verification and so on. And of course, then, well, we have the storage, but here we have also the Ketchak, well, Ketchak and Poseidon, we are working with two hashes. Ketchak for keeping uh, compatibility with uh, Ethereum. I explained a little bit how, how we, we, we did that before. And we are also, for example, for uh, encoding the programs, we are using this Poseidon, which is much more efficient and allows us to, to execute uh, harder projects. There are some other um, minor state machines, like, for example, for memory alignment, that's a little specific in Ethereum. But this, is a this gives you a little bit the idea of the different pieces that, that, that we have, okay? So just uh, some details, for example, from the execution, for the execution tray, so, so how we are working with the memory. I'm gonna go fast, but the idea of memory is just a permutation check. So the idea is that we are uh, rearranging all the operations that we are doing in the main state machine uh, just sorted by address, so we are packing all the operations on a single address uh, together, so that we can do that operations on that address in, uh, with a single register, which is the value, so we are setting or getting the value to this register, and here, of course, in this state machine, we need to force that this, this is a sort, here is a, um, the, here is a, um, uh, well, here, there is some, here is some, some checks, and so on, but this is the idea of the, of the memory. Of course, for example, for the arithmetic state machines, well, we have operations that are in the main state machine. We have maybe another state machine that's doing specific arithmetic operations, and then we check with, with PILOCAP, we are just connecting them, and we, we are ensuring what we assume that this is valid. We are just moving forward, maybe because it's a free input here. We are ensuring here that the, the, that, that the, operations, that the operation matches, okay? Uh, with this, we have the processor, so this is the hardware, but then we need to build the program on top of the hardware, okay? So this is mainly what the ROM uh, does. I want to show you a little bit what the, the, how this ROM looks like, okay? This is, for example, uh, the part of the ROM that uh, executes the opcodes of Ethereum. Here we have a stop, add, and, well, all the, all the opcodes, all the Ethereum opcodes, okay? want to go to the, to, the, to the last. Here, you see the, the format of the assembly. When you see here, for example, a dollar, that means it's a free input. If it has nothing else, it's, in general, this is uh, uh, implicit, because mLoad already implies that you are reading from memory, so this is, you know, which value you have to put in this uh, free input, but sometimes uh, you need to specify uh, that you want to put part of the transaction or you want to put something in there. And this is the idea. You put something in the transaction and then, for example, you hash it and then you check that what you put it is, is, is you cannot put, a, so actually is, you can put everything, but then it's gonna be checked, so you cannot put a, a, whatever you want. Okay, so this is the, the idea. Well, just, uh, let me just go to the end, but you know, here you can see all the, all the different, the different opcodes. Uh, here we implemented, uh, all the opcodes were call, uh, you know, uh, here is uh, uh, return, uh, here you have, um, that's more return, delegate call, uh, well, all the, all the opcodes create to, so all the opcodes uh, uh, of Ethereum. Here, what we have not implemented yet, but it's definitely pos possible is the, the precompiled smart contracts. Interesting is, for example, the, the paintings. You know, actually, with all this, with the arithmetic function that we have, actually, we can do these operations very efficiently. So it should be quite relatively easy to extend this arithmetic to support the uh, work, the, the painting 
basic functions to work in the in the in the BLS or in the BN 128 or in the BLS uh, corp. Okay, but this is the idea, and and not only that. I have you know just of course this is just the opcodes, but you need to for example to um, the RLP, you know to um, parse the RLP. Uh, you know we, we are this and this language is what allows us to be very very compatible and be very similar to Ethereum. We are just managing the gas and uh, all the all the details of the ZKV, of the ZKVM we are implemented uh, we are implementing here you know, there are some details here I'm not going to che uh, check there are some for example some den denial of service attacks and you know for example imagine a loop that's doing a lot of catch acts we are the way that we are handling this is uh, we are um, we have some counters so if we don't have enough resources to do some operation we just uh, file before but the proof is valid so we, maybe it's a no op operation but the proof is valid so there are some details here that are that, that, that okay. For testing, here it's interesting that for testing, because we are opcode compatible ZKVM, mainly what we are taking is the, 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 the test, uh, all the test, the, the Ethereum testing suite, just to run the test. We are trying, of course, we are trying to be as compatible as possible. The goal is to reach 100%. No, we just started. Last week was like 25%. This week is already 60%. The beginning is very easy. You know, this is not, this number makes no, no sense. At the end, it's going to be more complex. But uh, this gives us a good path of, uh, for testing. The, at least it's a good test for the system. We need to test many things. Okay. Um, just give you some benchmarks on the prover. I think that the prover where we are using this uh, small prime field, the Goldilocks, is this comes from the, uh, the Polygon Zero, it's the XMIR uh, protocol. Uh, we are using all the technology or the improvements they made in the, for, the, for, you know, for, the accelerate, for the acceleration. This allows us to build, for example, uh, 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 the basic proof that we have right now. This is for, you know, just for information, the people is, this is, um, it's a uh, start with about 600, six, six, 700 uh, uh, columns of 223 two, rows. The metrics that we are following more or less is that every six rows, every, every, every 16 rows is a gas unit in Ethereum. This is just a, a reference. We are trying to be below that, that part. And in most of the instructions, this is that way. So this gives us a number that, you know, in this way we can do a more or less a 500K gas uh, proof. And right now with a regular CPU, with a, with a big CPU, but CPU, 64 cores, it's something that cost in AWS uh, $2.5, uh, well, it's uh, subsend. So the cost of the transac per transaction, we are already in the subsend. And there is a still a lot of margin to, a lot of margin to improve FPGAs and doing, you know, improve many, many improvements in the design and so on. There is, we have margin here, okay? Um, well, one test net before people ask it, uh, we don't know. Uh, it's, this is the idea that we have in mind, but you know, uh, here, um, the biggest concern is security. You know, the, here, as you see, there is a lot of new things and a lot of new um, uh, you know, programs and things that need needs to be audited, tested. This is my biggest headache and my biggest challenge that I have at this point. We are starting to run a, a, a program well, for we are we are making a call, and here I'm making a call for auditors, people that's interested in this technology. The idea is to run a program for teaching this technology and for going deep and working together with the team for a while, so that maybe in one, two, three months, once we freeze the code, we can have this set of auditors that can um, audit or code review, if not all, at least part of that. So if you are interested or you think you can add value here, we are very interested in, 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 in that, and this is probably, you know, it's, 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 it's tough. Eh? It's not easy to, to work, but yeah, I think here, uh, well, we need, we need to start, and, and this, is, uh, this is why we open sourced everything, so all the repos are here, especially here, PILCOM and PILSTARK are the more the more tooling part, the other is more ZKVM specific. But you know, I think here is a lot of work for that we have been doing for the last year, and uh, we can learn a lot here, and we can take a lot of ideas, and just uh, uh, we are open here for collaborations and anything that you need. And that's mainly my presentation. I think that I put it very much on time. I don't, I'm not sure if we have time for questions. Uh, we don't really have time for questions, but there are multiple questions, so it would be great if you could go on Discord and, and respond I to will, them. I will, I will answer there. Fantastic. Thank you, Jordy. Really Perfect. appreciate it. Thank you.